All right. Well, thank you so much, Nikki. And again, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this and for everything you've done. I mean, I love how the education community, the professional community and social is just coming together um, to provide some great tips. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen um, to show my uh, presentation. And then also I'll make sure that this is available for everyone um, through the Facebook group in case um, anyone wants to see my slides. I'm a Again, an open book. Um, so again, I, thank you again, Nikki, for allowing me to be part of this session. Uh, my name is Karen Freeberg, and I'm actually gonna be talking a little bit about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I love talking about personal branding, but today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about opportunities through partnerships and collaborations, but really what are the things that we have to keep in mind when we're looking at our personal brand? So. A little background of me before I get started. I'm at the University of Louisville, so um, behind me, I'm actually not at the University of Louisville. I'm in my home office, but it looks like I'm at Louisville. Um, and so I'm really honored to be here. And um, I love social media. That's kind of the area that I do a lot of teaching, a lot of work in. Um, my background, of course, I've gone from you know Florida, where I did my bachelor's in PR at the University of Florida. Then I went to Southern California for my master's, and then my PhD at Tennessee. So all football schools, I guess, all basketball schools um, for the most part. Um, and I, I try to practice what I preach in the industry. So I've had some work um, in the industry, working as a consultant. So most recently I've been doing a lot of work on the higher ed side related to social media pedagogy. Um, and also um, I'm a coffee drinker. I think that's a major food group for us in social media and teaching and education. So um, this is definitely an opportunity that if Starbucks or Duncan wants to sponsor us, we will we'll need the coffee. Um, but I definitely am a social media enthusiast. I love it. I breathe it. And um, Nikki and I have been connected for years on Twitter and just, I'm again, very grateful for this opportunity. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about personal branding, but I think what's important, and I share this a lot of times with my students and fellow educators, what does it mean to have a personal brand? And I think before you look at potential opportunities and potential partnerships, you want to kind of think about what is your personal brand? What do you stand for? What is your expertise? What are areas you see yourself uh, really capturing, you know, a unique perspective in the industry? And so when my students are like, oh yeah, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be an influencer. I want to be all of these great things. Or I have other colleagues that are like, I'd love to be able to partner with a brand like this. I think the most important thing is to first kind of do a self audit, kind of look at what am I doing that really resonates with people? What do I, am I known for? And one book I would highly recommend you guys um, definitely checking out if you haven't already is Mark Schaefer's known book. And I'll make sure to share a link to it. It's one of the best personal branding books out there. Um, and I think it's important for us to kind of think about how would you describe your brand to someone else? So as I mentioned to you guys just now, I am a professor. I try to consult. I've written a social media book that I published back in 2018. I love coffee, still working on that partnership. That's, that's a you know, new decade goal. But these are things that I feel that, that come natural to me. And I think what we have to think about is what it means to have a personal brand. People have a voice, a very unique and personalized way to showcase your personality. And that's what's great about social media is you're able to showcase what you're able to bring to the table, what your perspective is. And I know in, in higher education, everyone kind of tries to stay similar. And um, when I was in school, I remember very quickly as a PhD student at the University of Tennessee thinking, I'm not like everyone else. Everyone is very serious. And I, I kind of joked with people that I felt like Elle Woods when I walked on campus in Knoxville, just because I, I did, you know, get an internship um, and uh, studied abroad in South Africa in the fashion industry. I was from California and I thought orange was a new pink. I mean, Tennessee loves their orange, but it's important for us to embrace those unique assets and unique capabilities of who we are, what we're able to do. And so I think that's something to keep in mind. And we each have a voice. We each have a personalized way in showcasing our personality, our overall tone on social. And that's really where social media um, for your personal brand can open up so many opportunities. 
the brands that I've had a chance to work with over the last couple of years, specifically with various platforms, third-party tools, have resulted solely for what I'm doing on social. So I think from a higher ed standpoint, industry perspective, we all have abilities to showcase who we are. But I think simply, a personal brand is online and offline interactions and expertise showcased. And what I mean by showcase is, where are you presenting your brand? Is it through written content? Is it tweets? Is it vlogging? Is it social media stories on Instagram? How are you best articulating your personal brand? And so I'm going to have three different areas to keep in mind when you're looking at how to build those partnerships, how to build those brands. So I'm very transparent in terms of my background. And so I wanted to kind of share with you like my personal brand, how I describe myself. I love my coffee. I'm an author, but then I have this little other uh, picture on the side, um, back to where I used to be about 15 years ago. Um, and so I was a track and field athlete. I was a student athlete, both at Florida and Southern Cal. I used to throw things. That was me at the Olympic trials back in 2004. So when my students do a Google search on who their professor is before the semester starts, that's what they get. So it's, um, I've never had any issues with um, student um, inquiries, let's just say. So they still think I can throw things right now, but it's part of my background. It's part of my story. And that's the thing that I think when you're looking at po potential possibilities for collaboration and partnership, think about what experiences you are able to have that best, you know, align yourself with these brands, with these partnerships and these companies. Thinking about those opportunities can open up a wave. So I've been able to work with a lot of um, on the sports side, whether it's Adidas or a few other brands, because I'm like, look, I understand that you guys are targeting professional athletes, student athletes, but I'm a former student athlete. This is my background. I understand what you guys are trying to do. And so being able to kind of think about those unique characteristics to kind of showcase your expertise in a new way is really great. Um, other examples of personal brands, I got to give up to, of course, Ryan Reynolds and The Rock. Um, the Rock has called me Dr. Karen and Ryan Reynolds follows me on Twitter. Probably the only thing, <laughs> I wouldn't say the only thing that my students pay attention to, but when they found out that Ryan Reynolds follows me on social, um, they were like, okay, now professor's cool. And I'm like, seriously? Like I've done all these other things, but you know, to each his own. But I really think that what Ryan and The Rock do is tremendous. And we can all learn something from everybody when we're looking at personal brands. And the thing that I really like about what Ryan Reynolds has done, especially with um, his ties with Aviation Gen, if you guys are not following them, follow them, they're amazing. He really engages social with audiences. It's him, it is him behind that screen. And um, I had a chance to um, do a podcast actually with um, another professor down at the University of Florida, Brianne uh, Fleming. She had a podcast with myself and Adrian Molina, who is their senior brand manager for Aviation Gen. And he was able to share like, yeah, this is Ryan, like he does his own social. There's no publicist, there's no handler, that is him. And he does a really good job authentically engaging with people on social. And it was great to see from a celebrity standpoint that, you know, really come forward. I've been a fan for, of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock for years. I think what he does across his social is great in terms of for balancing his own content with his real videos, with his promotions, but he does it in a very authentic way. And as we kind of go through in higher ed and in, in the industry for our students, our colleagues, we can learn from both of these um, professionals, you know, in terms of what they've done successfully in their workplace. Now for personal branding, I think what's Again, you might be thinking, okay, with everything that's going on with the coronavirus, why is it important for us to really build upon a personal brand? Because it's evolving. Like what we're doing right now, how education is evolving, how higher ed is changing. We have to evolve and respond to the changes. Our personal brands are uh, fragile. Um, I'm actually talking about crisis communications this week in my classes, and I brought up, you know, the actress Vanessa Hudgens and how she really, with her IG live uh, commentary about the coronavirus, really hurt her brand. It's like, yeah, it just takes one instance. <laughs> and you have to constantly maintain it and invest in it. You, know, you really have to kind of think about what are things that I can do to better myself? What are skills that I can do to help amplify my brand? And also, it's formed by personal interactions and word of mouth. Like, how can we 
build a community to help each other. And so by establishing a personal brand that you're able to help other people, the better off you're going to be. What Nikki has done with these two days of a virtual Austin South by Southwest is tremendous. Her impact has been so wonderful for our community. So again, thank you, Nikki, for everything you've done. It's just been great to kind of see this community flourish. But as I mentioned too, as you go forward with providing and looking for partnerships and opportunities, there are three components that you have here for your personal brand. The first is personality, the other is consistency, and the other is expertise. You need to have those three, you know, to kind of create a pitch, you know, when you're looking for partnerships and collaborations, you want to make sure you have those components here before you make for, you know, go forward in the opportunities that you have. So let me talk about personality. Um, and I'll share with you guys a little bit of a story of my background. Um, and I'm pretty much of an extrovert. I love talking to people. I'm a people person. You know, I love being out in the crowds. But you want to kind of be able to kind of see, okay, what is my personality? How do I describe it? You know, what are some attributes that I would associate myself with? And I joke that I'm only Dr. Freeberg 2.0. The original Dr. Freeberg is my mom, but she teaches psychology. So as a daughter of a psychologist, I've taken a lot of personality tests. And so what you might want to do is kind of look at, you know, some of those and kind of see, okay, what type of personality am I? And these are individual features that are unique and memorable. And you do, you don't want to go completely off the deep end and just be only focusing on personality and be out there. You want to kind of balance it. What feels natural? What feels consistent with how you behave and respond and communicate with people? For me, I just, you know, I, I try to be as positive as possible. You know, I mean, there's times where, you know, I might run out of coffee. That's, that would be, you know, catastrophic for me. But you, I always try to be on, you know, you know, positive online. And so what you want to kind of look about, you know, and think about before you're kind of looking at partnerships with brands and collaborations, think about what are the personality traits that I um, look for. And one way I'll talk a little bit about how you go about and doing it is doing an audit, like looking at your tweets, looking at your updates, looking at your content that you're sharing and ask yourself, is this reflective of who I am? in my personal brand? Is this what I want the world to see digitally? And is that also tied in back to my um, offline brand as well? And that's the thing too, to keep in mind is that there's a lot of people that we see in the industry that are one way online and then you meet them in person and you're like, wow, did I have a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde moment? And I've had that with some you know, people that I met over the years where I'm like, whoa, you are clearly not the same person. And that disconnect is what people kind of react to, but you want everything to be consistent. So if we were actually here at South by Southwest in Austin, I would be presenting the same way as I am right now to you guys. So the big thing here too is consistency, you know, in terms of managing your brand. So if you want to do partnerships and collaborations, you know, utilizing your personal brand, you want to be consistent. And it takes time to think about how you're presenting yourself, but also making sure that your voice the content you're sharing, the content you're creating, what you're sharing within your community is still appropriate. It's still aligned to what you're doing. And so there's so many different layers here as well. And so, as I mentioned before, you don't necessarily want to just focus primarily on your online presence and forget the offline or just say, okay, I don't need online. I just have my offline. You want to be consistent. You want to be consistent and just kind of figuring out that nice wiggle room area that you're able to communicate and share that, you know, your story to the better off. And best advice that I have is be yourself, be natural, and it takes practice. Be kind to yourself too. You know, it, a personal brand does not happen overnight, but it, it has to take some momentum, some investment and some time. And then expertise. In this community that we have, whether you're in your higher education, in the industry, or you're an entrepreneur, you have expertise in figuring out what that is to be able to share and reach out to brands and say, look, I have this area that I have that I can provide expertise in. Let's work together. Let's come together to see what we can do. And so I do not you know, promote myself as being a rocket scientist by any stretch of the imagination. But what I try to do is say, these are the areas that I list, you know, that I can bring some expertise in teaching, research, crisis communication, social media strategy, pedagogy, um, so PR. So there's a lot of areas that I, I feel that would be very beneficial that 
you know, I feel like I can market myself. So you really want to kind of do a checklist and say, what are things that based on your experiences, based on your studies, your area that you can bring to the table. So we all know those gurus. We all know those change evangelists right now. There's so many experts coming forward saying, I'm a work from home expert. Great. Great. But these titles are just one thing that we focus on. We want to look at what's the evidence? What are the things that you've done that kind of showcases and really provides proof for your expertise? So I think what you're seeing right now um, is an illustration of that. Like, what are things that we can all do together to kind of say, I do have expertise in this, you know? And so we see that in education. Do you have online teaching experience? How many years? What classes have you done? How have you approached these different situations? So everyone's kind of coming together and we're all kind of building up expertise on that. And so um, the experience that we're having here with this virtual South by Southwest events is an experience of a successful and impactful um, event that has done, been created, implemented, and executed in a wonderful way. So up to you again, Nikki, for that. Um, but again, questions to ask yourself, you know, before, you know, you're kind of looking at these opportunities is what are some of your views and beliefs on topics? What are some attributes that you can use to describe yourself? And how do other people describe you? And so I would say at this time, you know, again, social distance is appropriate or digital um, social distance. Think about this, maybe have this as a homework assignment, ask people, how do you think about me? You know, what are some attributes that come forward? Um, what are things that I can do, you know, to be able to showcase my personality or expertise and um, think about that, but also ask yourself, what are some brands, companies, partnerships you would want to align yourself with? So as I mentioned before, I'm just waiting for Starbucks or a coffee company to call me and say, Karen, you are our person. We want to sponsor you. I'd have a moment right there. That would be amazing. But that's what the questions that I've worked with. So I've done a lot of work on the social media side with Hootsuite, HubSpot, Facebook Blueprint, Adobe, all have been amazing. Same thing with Can Lions, but I've looked at those partnerships because their values align with mine. Uh, they're invested in education and it's a natural partnership. It's a natural collaboration involved. And so that is something that I've tried to um, continue to build upon and work on in my own personal brand. So what you wanna do is figure out what are the brands and um, our areas that you can partner with that would align with what you stand for. So that's, again, you want that natural connection. You want that natural um, bridge to come forward. So how do you establish a brand, you know, a personal brand? So what are some opportunities to build upon that? So first of all, build a brand kit. And this is something that I've talked with other educators about. And um, I do this with my students. I'm actually having them do a media kit for themselves as part of their personal brand that's due um, in a few weeks for my social media class. But you see influencers have media kits. Why can't we? You know, what are some things that we can do to kind of promote ourselves? So these are the documents that you will be able to create to send out to brands. And so I love Adobe Spark. Um, if you go and utilize their pro uh, features, you'll be able to you know, create your own brand kit. What are you able to do? So it's basically your story, who you are, um, what your expertise areas are, what you're looking for in terms of brand partnerships, what are your metrics on social? What are your experiences in terms of previous brand partnerships and opportunities? Where have you spoken? Any testimonials? So again, if you guys are interested in that, I have a video that I actually walked through with my students that I posted on YouTube that I'd be happy to share. Also doing an audit of yourself. So looking at opportunities, you wanna be someone that's very honest in how you're approaching things. You wanna make sure that you are kind of looking at yourselves in a real lens and asking yourself, how would you define yourself? What are experiences have helped you shape to you as a person? So for me, my student athlete experience helped me tremendously. Coming in from maybe a different approach as a professor, I, I joke with people, I'm like, well, my background is not the typical uh, background of a professor, but the, um, the values that I have in terms of trying to bridge academics with um, the industry is really at the core of what I'm trying to do as a professor for my students, for my colleagues, fellow educators, and to the community. Um, how do you communi communicate with others and how is your voice different? So for me, you want to look at what content speaks for you. So some people feel like Twitter is their number one place for creating content. For me, it's my number place, one place to be part of a community, 
to have discussions ongoing, but I love blogging. I love writing. I love written content. That's really how it has been my bread and butter. But most recently due to the coronavirus, I've really found a love for Zoom. I've found a love for video where I really hadn't done so previously. So you want to kind of think about ways in which you can kind of create content to make an impact on the community. And what is your personal mission statement? Where, what's your purpose? What are the brand pillars you feel like you're you know, tied to? How do you see yourself in the industry? Um, what are core things that are your must haves in any kind of collaborations or, you know, possibly what are some no goes? Like what are some, you know, possible actions that companies or brands can take that you're like, nope, I do not want to be part of that. Do not, do not pass go, do not collect $200. And so that is something to keep in mind as well. And I think it's important for us to keeping our brand image and voice consistent. Um, so what you might want to think about doing is if you're looking for amplifying your brand to look for opportunities, create a website. Um, that is your central hub of information where you're able to control your voice, your image, that everything's consistent and use social media as extensions to present yourself to other touch points, you know, in the community online and be able to drive people back to your brand. So establishing a brand voice is key because you want to be able to kind of look at these opportunities and see what are some possible ways in which brands and others can contact you. So the examples that I mentioned with Hootsuite and HubSpot, Facebook Blueprint all came from social media, but they drove back to my website. They're like, okay, what has Karen done? What has she done in terms of providing evidence? What is her story and how can I get in contact with her? So you wanna kind of use social media as an extension to bring back to your website. But again, everything needs to be consistent and aligned. Um, but I think lastly, you know, what, about you makes you, you. Um, and so we have to be our best advocate. No one is gonna be the best person to tell our story other than ourselves. So we really have to kind of take ownership of this. And that's what's great about this profession and what we're able to bring to the table in social is how we can distinguish ourselves from others. This is not a part about being aligned and the same like everybody else. It's about looking at how do we stand out from others what are things that make us us? And you really want to kind of set yourself apart. And, and so the game here is just saying, okay, you know, I'm a professor. I'm in this, you know, box. I teach social media. So there's a lot of us that are in that box, but what makes me unique? And so that really kind of takes a long, hard look of really saying what makes me. Everyone has different experiences, different backgrounds, different interests. I love the community that we are seeing kind of emerge through out this, you know, environment. And there's a lot of possibilities here, you know, to be able to showcase our story, you know, so everyone has an opportunity to do this through social, through digital, through webinars like this. And it's really awesome to be able to have that experience. Um, so I know that I have about 10 minutes um, left of the presentation, but I definitely wanted to see if there was any questions or comments or anything I could do to help. But I'm an open book. Um, I love talking about social and personal brain in all these areas. So um, if there's anything I could do, I have my email address. I'm just karen.freeberg at louisville.edu. I'm on all social, even TikTok, but I don't have that many followers there. So I'm still working on that. And then I'm on LinkedIn as well and Facebook and everywhere. So um, I'm an open book. And again, thank you, Nikki, so much for allowing me to be part of this um, great community. So um, yeah, I'll open up to questions. Actually, one professor that I really highly respect, her name is also Karen, but her name is Karen Sutherland. She's down at the University of the Sunshine Coast. She is killing it on TikTok. So if you guys want to look at a, a educator really doing amazing things on TikTok, she's Awesome. So Tracy Hunyun, it looks like has a question. I'm curious how students have responded to the build your own social media kit assignment. She thinks it's a great idea. Would you be willing to share any examples? Yes, absolutely. So their assignment is going to be actually due on the 3rd of April. So as soon as they turn it in, I will definitely make sure to, you know, see if I can get permission for them to share it out. But um, I can definitely share the tutorial and um, one of the things that I've been a big believer on as an educator, especially dealing with Gen Z, is they kind of look at me, I'm, I'm an older millennial, even though I've had a few students that have said, Dr. Freeberg, you're vintage. I'm like, hey, I, I signed your grade. <laughs> but then I'm like, hey, vintage never goes out of style, right? But um, I feel though in this 
you know, kind of area, I have to practice what I'm preaching. So I actually in this um, Zoom video, um, and I'll make sure to share the link um, in the group, I actually did a media kit myself. So I'm like, okay, well, how would I present myself? How would I, you know, share this, you know, so I did that for the students. So they're able to see, okay, our professor's not just assigning assignments, you know, for busy work during this time, she's actually doing it. So I tell the students that I never ask them to work harder than I do. And then they look at my work and they're like, okay, well, we're not going to play. So, but, um, but yeah, they've, they've loved it. I mean, a lot of them are looking for internships, especially now with remote internships, they're thinking, okay, I really need to step up my game, you know, in terms of my personal brand. So they've been very willing to work on this. Um, and I think, if, if I have other educators who are on, you know, listening, really trying to think about assignments that are, would be helpful for them in their next steps of their career that they feel that ties in what we're covering in class, but it could be beneficial and long lasting afterwards. So um, that's one assignment I'm, I'm doing. And then I have actually, I'm having my grad class actually has digital workshops through Zoom where they'll be able to record um, the webinar, then upload that and have a digital asset of their sharing their expertise. And so I feel like, you know, you have to make le lemonade out of lemons and what we're dealing with. But I think uh, overall, I'm thinking, yeah, a lot of these students are going to have digital assets that will help them amplify their personal brand after graduation. Now, I definitely feel that, you know, when my students graduate, I feel like I'm a mother ahead. I'm like, don't go. I want you to stay. But then you have to float away and they do amazing things. And I actually, through this, um, process. I, I, I would imagine everyone's looked at the shed aquarium that is in sh Chicago. Um, so I was having a bit of a proud prof moment. One of my former students is part of their social media team. And so I just was looking at this. I felt like Mushu and Mulan. I'm like, my, my babies are all grown up and doing amazing things in the social media world. So I had a proud prof moment. I have all sorts of moments, but that's the be benefit of, you know, being in education is you're able to mentor. Yeah. Your, your students and interns think you're so lucky to have you. You guys have been killing it at Michigan. Fun fact, when I was um, going to school on recruiting trips, I actually, Michigan was one of my schools. So I actually was able to go to the Michigan, Michigan state football game. I love teaching, I love helping and making an impact. I mean, that's been my goal across the board is to see how we can kind of come together, whether it's educators, students, community as a whole. I mean, just making an impact and be a resource. I've been a firm believer of that. And, um, and that's been what's great is to see the community rise to the occasion again, I'm very grateful, Nikki, that you've, you've set this forth and this you know, opportunity because so many people are looking like, how do we continue our learning? How do we continue growing in our knowledge base? And how can we basically utilize these tools to help our students? And just it, it, leadership is coming out in so many different directions during this time. And so I want to thank you again for everything that you've done for our industry, higher ed industry across the board.